Hey everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch channel on YouTube. In this video, um, we'll be talking about transhumanism and why it will fail. And basically, it will fail because the scientists that are working on it are working with a flawed model. They uh, want to believe, although they can't prove it, they would like to believe that consciousness is a product of the brain when in fact it is not and there's so much evidence to support that fact but uh, they refuse to accept that because they are atheists and they believe this is their ticket to immortality or something like that they're uh, there are basically two types of transhumanism, so I should tell you uh, what the difference is before we go ahead with this video. Of course, there's the, um, what you could say would be like a cyborg. Uh, well, you know, you have to draw the line somewhere, but basically, well, let's say somebody loses an arm or something in an accident or because of an injury, uh, we can begin to replace that with a prosthetic. In the future, I imagine science will develop something that we can control with our consciousness. So you could have an arm back. Perhaps it will be stronger than a human arm or in hand. Perhaps it can do more than a human arm or hand. At that point, I guess you could consider that transhumanism. But that is not the type of transhumanism that I'm talking about here in this video. The type of transhumanism I'm talking about is the type that Ray Kurzweil talks about. The Google engineer who would like to become God, as he puts it. And that type of transhumanism involves the belief that they can transfer consciousness and memories from the brain into a machine. This is flawed on so many levels. There is much uh, more evidence to support the fact that consciousness is not product of the brain. As a matter of fact, they can't even begin to tell you where consciousness comes from. Now, when I first started out my YouTube channel, I was, uh, as you, if you would, if you had been following me since the beginning, you'll see that I have a change in opinion on many things. Um, so basically, to be brief about it, uh, I basically grew up Christian in a Catholic home and. I had a lot of indoctrination in that, so I had just assumed, although I never looked deeply into it until the last maybe two or three years, I had just assumed many things. So when I started out my channel, and uh, in my very early videos here, there's a video uh, called Transhumanism uh, 2045 Timeline, does it also reveal, reveal the approximate year of the end times? Because I was working under a model, a belief that uh, things like the book of Revelation were actually trying to tell me what the actual future was. Uh, now, I don't have any, I want to say, I don't have anything against anybody that believes uh, religions. Uh, I don't have anybody that believes in faith. I have a problem with people that believe in blind faith, and I have a problem with people that refuse to look at evidence and facts without resorting to that type of backfire effect where they double down on their belief and argue with you without reason. Uh, so, transhumanism and the scientists working on it uh, are doubling down. They refuse to accept the fact that they can't uh, tell you where memory is exactly, they can't tell you where consciousness is exactly, and they also have deceptive headlines. For example, in this MIT headline from Extreme Tech, MIT discovers the location of memories in individual neurons. When this article starts out, you would think that scientists actually figured out where memory was in the brain. You have to go into paragraphs two and three to start to realize, first of all, they're talking about mice, and they're not even sure what they're talking about. If you, as the more you keep reading this article, uh, you realize uh, the less that they know. Um, the, uh, this article, two years later, still, they, well, they don't know where memory is stored. When people have near-death experiences, it includes something that 
scientists should at least look at. The verifiable out-of-body experiences, these are called veridical experiences. In these NDEs where people are out of body and observing things in our material world. So they leave the hospital room or whatever, they're witnessing things in the real world, in this world that we're mostly perceiving everything from. And during that time, they can uh, make uh, tell us things that they witnessed and then they, these things are verified. A doctor, a nurse, or whatever will verify, yes, that did happen, or yes, that's exactly where I was at this time, or whatever. There's so many accounts of that. After that, of course, we get into the second part of near-death experiences that it can involve going through a tunnel or going through a transition where they end up in a higher plane of existence, and they can meet spiritual beings, dead relatives, etc. All this stuff uh, really leads to the conclusion that we do have consciousness that live that live beyond bodily uh, life, and while the uh, atheists don't want to look at that, uh, and I understand sort of why, because atheism and science that has been co-opted by atheism, they they really need to hold on to reductive materialism. Uh, for thousands of years, religions were running the show and telling everybody what reality was. And then there was sort of an appeal of well, a revolt or whatever. And then science took over. So afraid of anything to do with the afterlife or anything to do with spiritualism and religion, for fear that it could lead to religion, science does everything it can to deny evidence. Now, religions aren't much better because... When, for the first time in human history, medical technology has uh, progressed to a point where we can now resuscitate people that would have always remained dead in, in the past. Uh, these people are witnesses, and we have so many of them now that it's kind of stupid to ignore the evidence, but that's what they choose to do. So as, a, as my channel progresses here, I am showing that I'm willing to change my point of view. I'm willing to change uh, things that I used to believe because I have looked at evidence and have actually used cold, hard logic to examine it. Not like what atheists claim to do, which is they claim to be rational and logical, but in fact they do everything in their power to be apologists for reductive materialism. And um, I'll link to all this stuff in the description section below. As far as transhumanism, transhumanism goes, I would say at its worst, at its absolute worst, because they'll never be able to do what they think they can do. They will never be able to put um, human consciousness into a machine because they have no idea how that works, and they're in complete denial about what it actually is. Uh... There was a movie in 2009 called Surrogates with Bruce Willis. This movie would probably be uh, a good indication of what the absolute worst thing that transhumanists could end up doing, which is actually creating um, robotic avatars for us to uh, control while our living bodies and living minds uh, get plugged into like a virtual reality uh, computer that allows us to have like a, f a fake version of us go out into the real world, go shopping, interact with other people. And so this movie is really kind of a dark sci-fi movie, but I do recommend it if you're interested in, you know, seeing what, what technology could possibly do. But as far as what they're working on, what Ray Kurzweil thinks will give him Im immortality, uh, or what uh, many Christian tr truthers think will lead to the apocalypse, that is all based on a flawed understanding of the science behind this stuff. They are never going to be able to create uh, AI like what people fear. They could, they, AI with consciousness, they can create a very complex AI that can mimic consciousness or maybe can create an AI that could possibly fool you for a while. But anybody's out there who's a gamer or works with computers or works with coding and understands algorithms, uh, you know, the human consciousness is quite capable. If you're playing a game, you can 
learn quickly the um, habits of the AI characters you're fighting in a game, and they are quite different than uh, multiplayer with real people. Um, AI, once you learn their tricks, you can outsmart them every time. Humans, we're capable of being very creative, changing on the fly what we do, strategy, tactics, etc. This is um, something that um, they'll never be able to put in a machine. They'll never be able to make a machine conscious like uh, we are conscious. They can make machines uh, mimic behavior as long as the input and outputs are uh, correct, but uh, they can't think of everything. So that's, uh, that's it. I'll link to all this stuff in the description section below. I just wanted to point out uh, a kind of like a revision video to my very, very, very early video that I made a year ago that uh, now you don't have to worry about the book of Revelation uh, in relation to transhumanism and science doesn't have, you don't have to worry about them uh, putting consciousness into a machine because they don't even have a clue as how it works. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this video was uh, useful to you and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.